Hello, this is Bryant Myers, and I'm a former college physics professor and best-selling author, and welcome to another episode of Debunking Flat Earth. In this episode, we're going to take a close look at the 8 inches per mile squared rule of thumb to determine the drop height due to the curvature of the Earth. Now, this is something a lot of flat earthers use very incorrectly, and it, it leads to all kinds of confusion because flat earthers think they're proving the Earth is flat, by saying, I can see this thing that shouldn't be seen at this distance, when in fact they're just using the rule incorrectly. And we're going to really go over that. And I want to kind of use an example here on one of the forums, one of the Flat Earth forums. Someone did an experiment on Onondaga Lake in Syracuse, New York. And he was pretty careful, so I'll give him credit. So the photo here you can see is picture of the lake and it's 4.5 miles from one side to the other and he's looking at a railroad bridge at the opposite end of the lake and he reported the camera was 22 inches from water level and according to his estimates the horizon should be 1.6 miles and the drop should be 13 feet so then he kind of shows us the picture that he's taken and you can see from this picture which he's correct, it says clearly the entire water level runs beneath the bridge. You can even see the concrete sidewalk. And according to his calculation, the water level should be right at the bottom of the bridge. Now he reports a worst case scenario refraction of about five feet. And you can see from this image, there is distortion. There is some waviness, so there's probably a high degree of refraction here. So according to his calculations of a drop of 13 feet, this should not be happening, right? Well, let's see where he went wrong. And it's very clear. I really like Metabunk's calculator here, and I've already kind of done this. So you can see this. Um, I, I'm putting in the distance in miles, which is 4.5 miles. The viewer height in feet is 1.833 feet. So this is his 22 inches. And it turns out, in all fairness to him, the geometric drop, which I'll, you'll see this highlighted here with, in red, uh, is 13.5 feet. So he reported 13 feet. Okay, so that's, that's, that's good. So I don't doubt his numbers. So where did he go wrong? And this is actually a very common mistake amongst flat earth experiments like this. So you can see right here, what he's doing is he's taking this drop as a tangent line across the surface. That is, he's ignoring the height of 1.833 feet above the water level. In reality, on the right here, this is what we should be doing. We should be taking the viewer height and looking down at the tangent point. So here is the big mistake that flat earthers can't seem to grasp. The horizon does not meet eye level. It just doesn't. When you're looking out at the horizon on, on, say, a sunset, you are looking down. You are not looking at eye level. And how much you're looking down depends on a lot of variables, but including your height and where your eye level is. But that is not eye level. Eye level would be straight across, as this image shows here. Getting back to the Metabunk calculator, here is the, the we factor in the height. This is what should be hidden, OK? so. So you can see, here's the drop. If you're, But notice the horizon is not meeting eye level. So we have to move our eyes down, and we look towards the horizon, which is down here. So what's hidden behind the horizon is not the same as what the drop is from the surface, or even eye level, for that matter. So this is why the calculator here has both the geometric drop, which is 13.5 feet. He said 13 feet, so that's pretty close. And the, but here's the key, the geometric hidden. Okay, this is what should be hidden, 5.39 feet. And he acknowledged that by refraction, it might be around 5 feet if the refraction is bad. And that image shows that there is pretty bad refraction, which is usually the case over water. You're always going to see the worst refraction effects over water than versus land. So. This absolutely does not debunk the spherical Earth. In fact, all these numbers um, and everything that he's saying is perfectly in alignment with our spherical Earth. So thank you so much for watching. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. I have many more coming. 
and leave some comments. I'd like to know what you think.